Karen Dash, Karen Dash, and Karen Dash. I need to just use a bunch of these. So that's why you see all the colors still on here. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with K Montes Art Studio and today we'll be going over my favorite art supplies. So after moving into my new studio, I've been able to see all of my art supplies very clearly. I laid them all out and if you haven't checked out my studio tour makeover thing, it's two parts, definitely check it out. This new studio has absolutely opened my eyes to certain things and there's one one supply that is kind of on the fence that was hidden in my closet and I'm staring at it <laughs> and I'm like is it my favorite I didn't I didn't get to work with it yet I really like the way it feels I might give you that at the very end but I'm still determining if it's my favorite or if it's the palette or if it's because I haven't used it that often. So anyways, let's jump into it and let's see if you like some of the things I like. Okay, so we're down here on the floor. And if you know me and you've been watching my videos for a long time, you know that I sit on the floor. Not only because it helps with my back pain that I magically acquired at the age of 34. Yes, I just turned 34. Um, but it's more comfortable. It helps me to be grounded. It also, I don't know, it just makes everything so much better. And it could be the reason that I paint the way I do. Anywho, let's jump into this. So here's everything. You probably can only see just a bit. And there's no socks of the day. So... I'm going to try to, actually let me move my mic, uh, where can I put it? All right, so I think I'm gonna start with my actual um, supplies. So I love this rug. This is actually a product sample. Um, as many of you know, I am also an interior designer and this was actually a wool carpet or uh, excuse me rug sample so the difference between those two one is installed into the floor one lays over the floor so this is a rug that lays over the floor anywho um, I really love these samples um, they would have initially been garbage but I saved the samples because when I'm sitting on the floor, I can put my ankle on here when I have nice socks on. And I can, you know, avoid pain from the hard wood floor. So that's my, my staple. I'm also sitting on another staple of mine, a pillow. Which I use as a yoga pillow. It's basically two older pillows that I put into this IKEA um, pillowcase and it's kind of like um, a squishy material I'm thinking of like gym clothes material so that helps to prevent it from getting super dirty let's jump into the sketchbooks and the actual art supply that I paint on okay so starting off with this canvas I love the two inch canvases I think this is a two inch or one and a half I love the thicker canvases and whenever they're on sale at Michael's I try to grab as many as I can I usually well for a while I was painting small and um, I was only able to work on smaller canvases but a while back when I was cleaning my basement in one of my previous videos I found a bunch of large-scale canvases so now I can bring those upstairs 
and paint them. But yeah, the thicker gallery style canvases are my favorite. And I don't know, it just creates a better interest. And especially when you paint all around, it just looks good. Another thing that I really love are wood objects. These are purchased from TJ Maxx and it came in a huge stack of I think four or six, I can't remember, I bought these a while ago. But anything that I can sand down, prime, and paint, I love utilitarian things. I don't know if that's the proper word, but um, things that I can use. I love using things with purpose that are beautiful and that is a uh, this is actually like a bowl like a plate to be used for food um so yeah that's that another canvas like material that i love are wood art panels i really love painting on wood and these are from michael's artist loft collection they come in a pack of four for about eight bucks very affordable the larger ones are also really nice and you can either choose to gesso these or to just go straight in with acrylic paint i definitely suggest gessoing them if you're using oil but i love these i love that they're small compact um, they give me that feel of a canvas, but also tiny like a paper. So this was this was working very well for me when I was in my smaller studio. Okay, so another new discovery that I learned that I love because they were on sale. I purchased these at Michael's, uh, actually Hobby Lobby, Master Touch wood panels so these are basically the panels on a frame and it you know it's a pretty thick panel similar to the ones that I just showed you except for is mounted so it's nice in that you can wire these a little bit easier than the other ones which I would probably end up having to frame but I really like the way these feel and they also are smoother than the other uh, panels. So that's a really nice touch. Um, so it depends on what you want to do with them. If you want a smooth painting, if you really like to blend, this is the way to go. If you like textural things, the um, Artist Loft panels are the way to go. They're a bit more textural. Moving into some of my papers and sketchbooks. I'll start off with the papers. I really love mixed media Strathmore's um, paper. It has like a really soft finish. I love papers that are soft finish for acrylic and gouache. And I love textural things for watercolor. But this particular paper holds a lot of different things. Um, ink, markers, acrylic markers, uh, alcohol markers, gouache, all everything. It's pretty thick and it's really good to um, use everything on. So this is my staple. I actually keep this in my travel bag. Another mixed media paper that I really like is black toned paper. I actually like all sorts of toned paper, but in particular, black is my favorite. And you can see how nice it is to create like a night landscape. Um, just having the little pops of black come through helps the brighter colors, which I tend to use a lot, um, pop out. And I really love how that looks. This one, however, it's a little bit thinner, it has a little bit more tooth to the, the sheets. So if I had to get a thicker one, I would probably go with the Swarthmore. I believe they do have 
a black mixed media paper. Another type of paper I really like is hot press paper, in particular arches. I believe that's how you say it because it's a French word. Um, there's a huge debate about how to say it, but that's not for me to decide. <laughs> um, hot press paper is wonderful. And there are a couple other brands that I do like. I just discovered this other one. I'm trying to decide. I mentioned earlier if I like them or if I'm just learning that they're also good. So the reason why I like Arches is because it does have that little bit of tooth compared to this other one that I'm just discovering that I like. It's much more smoother. Similar smoothness to the mixed media paper. Um, but yeah, Arches is 100% cotton paper and it's really expensive. So if you're still learning, I would say don't go for the Arches, you know, practice on something that is much more affordable. Arches is, is definitely something you want for a final show. Um, it's good quality, archival, all of the above. Um, definitely recommend it. Okay, moving into sketchbooks. So, my royal talents. I love, love, love this paper, the tone of the paper. It's thick. It holds a lot. Um, I have a few different styles in, in this particular one. Um, I've seen some artists use, you know, paint and all types of wet mediums on here. Um, it's really good. I love the thickness of the sheets. It's not like tremendously thick like the mixed media paper, but it holds enough. Uh, the inks don't seep through as much. I've used here the Noodler's ink, which is pretty heavy and sometimes seeps through, but very, very little seep through happened. Um, it's great for markers, definitely. And I love this. this. This little travel one also stays with me in my art bag. My next favorite is this Hanamula sketchbook watercolor paper. I absolutely love, love this paper. I mean, it's probably, if you had to, I mean, it's all up to you. If you had to get paper and wanted to level up, in the paper you use, go for Hanamula. Um, I love Arches, but Hanamula definitely gives you that better quality. Like all my, my pages have been done with different mediums um, and they all lay flat. Like you can see how flat they lay. So I can only imagine that if you were to there's like maybe a couple pages that buckle and that's probably because i used too much water so this one in particular is buckled but if if you um if i had to imagine using just one single sheet of hanamula it's probably amazing next sketchbook is the Rangers. This Rangers sketchbook was recommended by Sandy Hester and, and Jesus goodness. It is so good. Like I really love, I didn't expect to love this book because of the way it opens. Like it has this weird situation happening here. And I, I like it. I actually like it. I need to revisit it. I haven't used it in a while, but it's thick, pretty much a thicker uh, matte 
mixed media paper. Yeah, and it holds all types of things. I've tried all types of mediums on here. Very amazing. And my last sketchbook that's my absolute favorite out of all of these. I love larger size sketchbooks. And this is my moleskin, I believe it's A3 paper. I always confuse this. And it is thin paper, not as thick as the other ones, you would be surprised. Um, but it holds so much without seeping through. Like, it's just so good. It does warp, it does curl, but I love that effect. So it's all up to you really, like what do you want to see? I just love even the sound of the pages flipping. Yeah, I've done all, officially all types of mediums in this book. Acrylic, marker, acrylic pencil, uh, uh, oil pastel, new color, uh, mixed media, pen, new color tools, jeez, um, water, water soluble, graphite, um, inks, acrylic paints, yep, Posca, I would say maybe except for a pencil I haven't tried but I mean it will probably hold okay now let's move into the fun stuff the more fun stuff and I'm gonna zoom in just a bit let's jump into some of the smaller mediums that I like to use so one of my very first earlier videos were about the Marabou Art Crayons. These are so fun. I love, love, love these. They're very childlike. Um, definitely recommend them. Not only do these crayons come in this brand, but they come in the Art uh, King Art brand and this particular pack comes with a bunch of different packs and I love this the storage container for this they uh, snap open like that and you have all the colors and they're organized very conveniently but these feel exactly the same as a marabou's I definitely recommend these check out that video of uh me reviewing these, so fun. Love these. And I believe they're water soluble too, which is even more fun. So moving into pens, pencils, and basically stationery. I absolutely love 4H pencils. It's my go-to pencil. Uh, in particular, the mono pencil, Tombow mono pencil is my favorite. Uh, my second favorite is the 4H General's Kimberly pencil. Um, some may debate that I like it because it's my name, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but yes, 4H lead is my favorite lead of all time. These were unexpected. The Pentel Energy Gel, Energel, I don't know exactly how to say it, pens, they are amazing. So I like pens that kind of are scratchy. And this particular pen, when I opened it, I was like, oh my God, this looks like one of my other f favorite pens. Um, Similar to, what is this brand? The Pilot Pen. Do I have one on my desk? Um, it has the same exact, you know, inner body filling. And I love this pen. 
very cheap. These came in a pack of either eight. I actually have these in an art haul. Um, these came in a pack of six or eight. I can't remember. They write so good and they're fun for sketching. They flow very easy. Second favorite pen is the Pilot Precise V5. I mean, I use this pen wherever I go. Love every single color. Love the pen. I've been using these for years. Great for sketching, great for writing, etc. So I love, uh, what are these called? Fountain pens. Um, is it fountain pens? So I discovered these, anywho, uh, fountain pens, calligraphy pens, whatever you want to call these. Um, the first one I started off with, which was Lamy Pen, I was not a fan of how the Lamy Pen dried up and kept on, you know, clogging. I'm not sure if it was the ink that Lamy um, recommends or if it was the actual paint of uh, the pen. But here is the Noodler pen. And I have the Noodler Bulletproof ink in here. Love this pen. I initially had a couple issues filling it, but I was able to figure out how to fill it. And a must. Totally worth it, even though it stinks. One common review <laughs> is that it smells like old cheese, and it smells... It doesn't smell today. I wonder if I managed to remove the smell. I don't know. It smells when you first get it. Just know that. So next pen is the Arteza gel pen. These are fun. I initially um, purchased the Jelly Roll pen. I didn't understand the hype of the Jelly Roll pen. But the Arteza white gel pen is so good. Like it goes on smooth, whereas the Jelly Roll is really scratchy. I know I said I like scratchy pens, but not in white. Um, then I have the mild liners. I love mild liners. They're fun to sketch with. They have a double tip, a chisel, and a pointed end. My favorite. Love, love these. So those are my pens and pencils that I absolutely love. So I didn't grab every single brush that I love, but I grabbed the brands or the bristles types. So the very first brush is this hog hair brush. This one in particular is no particular brand. I got these from Michaels uh, a long time ago. I think back when the Michaels was an AC Moore. And I love to make textural things with this bristle and it lasts so long. Love these type of brushes, hog hair brushes. A uh, second textural type of brush that I love are these calligraphy, uh, Chinese style calligraphy brushes. These are traditionally meant for ink and creating lettering. Um, but they're really great for textural style paintings. Um, this particular brand is uh, Blick and this one is the traditional Chinese brand. I love both of these so you'll see that they're a little bit different in that this one has like a bristle holder and the bristles are softer with this one, whereas this one here is a little bit much more textural. And when they become used, they're, let's see if I have one accessible. They become flared out. I don't have one right here, um, but they're so fun. The next brush, brushes, brushes that I love are the Princeton brand. I love the Velvet Touch. Actually, this is not Velvet Touch. I love Velvet Touch for both watercolor and acrylic. They're my go-to brushes. I don't know what it is that they've 
compiled in their secret formula of creating brushes, but they, in my opinion, are the best brushes in the whole world. They're worth every dollar. I love these brushes, the small brushes, the watercolor brushes, um, all these Velvet Touch style brushes are the best. To go along with that, another favorite of mine is another Princeton brand. Uh, I think just Princeton has the brush game figured out. This one is the Princeton Select. And these are a good alternative option for cost because the Velvet Touch and the other one that I like is the naturals they're really expensive the naturals are great for watercolor but the selects are great for a price alternative okay so that's brushes moving on oh wait i forgot I forgot my all-time favorite my all-time favorite water pen brush so these are Pentel water brush uh, holder things, and they come in three sizes, I believe, three or four sizes, medium, small, and large, and then they have like flat and wide and other things. These are great to travel with. I love, I use them almost every day. And then here is just like a water filler tube. I love this for wetting my watercolor palette, my gouache palette. It's just so convenient to carry water in here for, you know, respraying. And I have one more set of brushes that I realized I forgot. My travel brushes. These are great for watercolor. I haven't used them in a while because I'm trying to preserve them. Um, they're great. I found these on Amazon and they're called the Fumu. I uh, love how they like collapse and this is like metal and the way they like fold up and you can carry them in this leather pouch. Amazing. So now we're going to get into some of the dry mediums before we get into some paint. So actually, before we get into those dry mediums, I forgot to mention two more essential tools. Um, these, this cloth here is actually a wash rag, um, not used. These were brand new. <laughs> they, I bought them specifically for painting. Um, and what I like to do with them, I assign one for watercolor, one for acrylics, and one for oil. Usually the oil ones tend to be the ones that go the fastest. But I like these because you can cut them in half and fold them up, reuse it. I've washed the acrylic and the uh, watercolor ones and they come out feeling a little bit better. Uh, I would say after a certain time, you will eventually have to throw away the acrylic one because it gets really crunchy. But the watercolor ones, I can definitely say you can wash and use over and over and over and over again. So instead of, you know, using paper towels, you can just grab your cloth and take it with you, fold it up. If you cut it in, into a smaller piece, you'll have more. And I have so many that I still have after buying a pack of 12 or something next i have my uh, kneaded eraser i love this thing it's this one's actually pretty new um it's perfect for you know removing the extra graphite on my watercolor paper then i have my mono sharpener one you know what actually this one's a little bit different anywho's they're both really great they're pretty similar i had uh one as a larger one because i have the larger color pencils then i have my mono plastic eraser my favorite one 
Mono just makes amazing things in my opinion. So those are essential tools. Okay, moving on to dry material. No, these are not crayons. No, they're not lip smackers. They're actually ink tints. So these are Derwent ink tints. Um, I also keep my Lyra um, graphite uh, water soluble, um, whatever it's called, in here. And then I have my ink tins underneath. So the reason why I have both of these is because they're so convenient to break in half. And like, I mean, I don't have to buy another set of ink tints for a long time because they last for a very long time. So um, the one downfall is that your fingers get immediately dirty. So this is my travel one. And this is my in-studio one, which I rarely find myself going to. You can see that they're like practically brand new. I actually haven't even used these because I always go to this one, but I have like a backup set. Love these. Like, absolutely love them. My very first Derwent love. Okay, so that's ink tints. Then we're going to move into, I'm going to bring these three things together because I think they deserve to be together. Karen Dash, Karen Dash, and Karen Dash. Everything that they make is amazing. I mean, I love their oil pastels. Probably my favorite oil pastel in the world. I love the texture. I'm not so much of a soft oil pastel type of person. I love like the mediums. This is definitely a medium texture, not too melty, not too hard. They're just right. Then we have the color pencils. My goodness, like how can you make such perfect products every time? Um, the color pencil variety, the color types, everything is just wonderful worth every dollar these are all very expensive did i say expensive um if you're interested in buying me a birthday present or sending me a gift send me karen dash money <laughs> um the neo color twos by far the best thing i've ever discovered i love water soluble materials Neo Color 2s, a must have if you really love water soluble materials. They're so good. Um, I mean, I just don't know how to explain how they manage. Like, you could tell they did tons and tons of research to figure out their formulas. Everything about Karen Dash is my favorite. So, those are Karen Dash. Then we have the uh, Creative Colors by Mega Color, or Creative Color Mega Color Pencils, yeah, by Bren, I'm not even going to try to say that, <laughs> by this brand here, and this particular color pencil is huge. I love their color pencils, haven't... See, this is why I'm thankful that I moved because I haven't used these in a while and I love, I love, I'm the collection type of person and I also love that you can buy almost everything that I've mentioned so far, you can buy open stock. So like if I run out of a white, I don't have to buy another collection, I could just buy the white, same with all the other ones. So I love, I love buying collections, but I also love to have the option to buy you know an open stock item these are chunky and fun and they fit into the larger sharpener that i was mentioning earlier um 
if you watch Sandy Hester's videos, she loves the Ultramarine. It's by far the best blue. I mean, she is not lying. It's the best blue in town. But, Creative Color, amazing. Yeah, let's move into paint. So, my newest discovery is Holbein Gouache Acrylics. And this, um, this watercolor pan from, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on the name. I'll insert it at the bottom, but I love this, this gouache palette. I think I mentioned in the past that I'm not a huge fan of Kimi. And I, I just really like their palettes. Um, this is a miniature version of a Himi style stay wet gouache palette. If you are interested in leveling up your gouache and your gouache paint, get you some Holbein gouache, place it into this um, Holbein, uh, into this uh, stay wet palette and you got yourself a high quality Himi palette and it's smaller it's travel friendly you don't have to travel around with that huge gargantuan thing and it stays wet like if you just reapply quickly a little little bit of water you got yourself a good to go um gouache palette so that's Holbein sticking with a Holbein I love their acrylic wash, and this is a new discovery of mine also. I thinned these down, and I was able to paint, and if you haven't watched that video, an entire still life with these Holbein gouache. Um, they are probably so... Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but this little tube will take you years to finish, I'm assuming. It's very, very stretchy in that like you can put a dime size and that will probably last you the entire time, unless if you're using it a lot, that particular color. But I really love, love their gouache. So must have. Okay. So next is acrylic paints. So I've been having a bit of a heartbreak with certain acrylic paints. Um, my Heavy Body Master Touch, mm, it's okay. It's like budget friendly. Then I had, um, I previously had like the Basics Acrylic from Liquitex. Very uh, student friendly. You know good good paints for students that are on a budget or people that are on a budget with art supplies but I kind of wanted to level up so I was still experimenting with different types of acrylics then I came across the Windsor Newton um, gallery style acrylics these are so good um, they don't leave that extra shine if you water them down a bit and I don't know amazing I think if I do invest in a new acrylic set I would probably go with these but at the moment I have so much paint that I don't need to invest in anything so I have these mini travel ones this was like a test test pack and if I did want to you know go forward I know that I like these ones for sure and my heavy body acrylic um, from master touch would be out the door <laughs> if I get if I get those then I also try this mini sample pack from Liquitex soft body so this is like a regular acrylic <sighs> like I don't I don't know exactly what the difference is they do feel similar soft body wise 
Um, heavy body is of course thicker and creates like stronger peaks. Then you have the liquid acrylic, which is very smooth and runny and creates smooth paintings. Then you have the soft body, which I'm assuming that these are soft body too, but these are very um, sort of in the middle. So you have your heavy body, which creates peaks. Then you have your liquid, which is super flowy. And then I would say soft body is like right in the middle. These don't particularly say soft body or, you know, normal. I don't, I don't know. I don't know uh, what they are. But um, these Liquitex, I think I said that I would buy these if I wanted to get new acrylics, but definitely Liquitex. I want the big ones. I want the big bottles of Liquitex paint. I fell in love with these samples and I've been ready but I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I only say that because I have so much paint that I have to use and my goal is to finish out those paints before I move on to anything else. So I want to mention that these are a great sample pack if you're interested in trying new soft body paints. I would say go for the Liquitex. They're amazing. This particular collection is all the colors you would probably need. I would say maybe invest in a larger white. But these blues, you have two types of blues and you have your purple, two types of reds. Maybe get another yellow. Oh, actually, it has two yellows, so I take that back. Um, your green, your brown, you have two types of browns, and your black and white. I would probably add, like, my, my signature color pink in here, but this is the best. All right, so last paint selection here is my Daniel Smith watercolor collection I love their collection of watercolors I have some in larger tubes that are my favorite colors I need to just use a bunch of these oh my god I spent so much money on acquiring all these colors but Daniel Smith favorite watercolor moving on to my Posca pens love Posca pens. I have all sizes. I have the small size, the chiseled size, the rounded size, um, the mini, the mini ones. Love these. So moving on, my favorite inks are Royal Talons Amsterdam's acrylic ink. The best acrylic ink. Like if you're looking to move on, like if if I had to label these as like the next step after liquid acrylics and you wanted to get even thinner in paint, go for the acrylic inks. They are so smooth. You can take these so far. This little container lasts for a really long time. They're highly pigmented. Love, love, love. Use them all the time. Last but not least are my favorite palettes. I love these little um, travel palettes that I purchased on Amazon. I have all my um, Windsor, nope, not Windsor. Um, I have my Daniel Smith in here. Yeah, only Daniel Smith in my travel palette that I take everywhere. Then I have this palette which also has my Daniel Smith. This is a porcelain palette that stays in my studio. Love, love, love. Then I have this Artist Law palette which I didn't expect to love. This I use for my acrylics. Um, yeah, pretty much all my acrylics. I don't think I use anything else. Um, one thing about this palette is actually really hard to chip. So that's why you see all the colors still on here. I would say it's best 
when you use like the shinier acrylic but I use most of my acrylics that I use are in the matte sort of satin stage so it's harder to peel off but I love this this new baby is my by far newest tool and instantly fell in love this stay wet I've had this paint in here for about five days this is acrylic paint you guys this is still wet look like still wet it's amazing I'm so impressed I love I just am like very much so recommend I would say be careful because I hear that it molds I haven't gotten to that stage yet but this is pretty easy to maneuver there's a sponge underneath that you want to check up on every now and then um, I would say in about a week I'll probably you know clean things off once I finish using the paint and I hear that you can reuse the actual paper over again if you wash it out properly um, but yeah this is so so good the very last thing that I absolutely love 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 is my liquid text matte medium this is a must if you're painting on objects like wood or um, wooden panels paper um, you want to make sure that things don't bleed or things actually stick to the object matte medium is the way to go so that was today's video i hope you enjoyed all of my favorite art supplies let me know what your favorite art supplies is down in the comments below um, and also show me some of your work that you do in with some of your favorite art supplies i use almost all of these mediums daily if not a combination of these in one painting at a time so if you like this video you know what to do like and subscribe and i will see you in the next one